Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's a Celtic transfer talk. Where's that came from? I did not expect to be doing this during the international break, but here we are. So, let's dust off that old intro, let's get it rolling, and let's talk about potential transfers then. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It'd be much appreciated as we try and get towards 50,000 subscribers. Your support recently has been incredible. And even though the international breaks are tough and we don't usually have a lot to talk about, well, Celtic are giving me quite a bit to talk about because it's a Celtic transfer talk today. Couldn't believe it when I seen reports coming out that Celtic are looking at a potential January move um, for another Japanese player and... You know, Brendan Rodgers obviously behind the scenes wanting to improve the squad that we've got already. Sitting down, probably trying to puzzle together some moves. Um, and this is apparently one of the players that we've been looking at. Now, it's not a definite. It's only scouting. But let's talk about it anyway. So Sky Sports Germany reported this story late last night via Ben Heckner of Sky Germany saying that according to Sky Information, Celtic are interested in Kanji Okanoki from FC Nuremberg in Germany. The Scots have scouted the Japanese intensively in recent weeks, but there is no concrete offer yet. That was the story that has been taken and ran with um, by Sky and every other mainstream uh, outlet now, Daily Record, Football Inside, everybody are running with this story now after Celtic have been reported to be scouting Kanji Okanoki. Pronunciation might be off, but we've got the basics. So, I mean, you don't need a genius to explain the gist of that tweet. Celtic have been heavily scouting uh, the Japanese playmaker for the last few weeks. They haven't, of course, put a bid forward yet, and neither does it report that Celtic are going to put a bid in yet. But it looks as though there is a lot of truth in the fact that we have been looking at the player, and it falls in line with our recruitment strategy of the last few years. We've been very heavily involved with the Japanese market. We've signed a number of Japanese players now and this is one that Celtic probably had on the radar for a little while. Just in recent weeks we have actually been sending scouts out to have a further look. It's somebody who we're going to talk about in more depth in a minute. Is it what Celtic need? Is it the right player for Celtic to go for? We will discuss that but it's good to see early signs of transfer activity for January. You know we do need to add players. We also need to clear out players as well. There has to be a bit of a winter cleaning uh, rather than spring cleaning at the club and we do need some fresh faces and some reinforcement in different areas um let's just get the, the usual disclaimer out the way somebody who i haven't watched a lot of even though i'm a big bundesliga fan i don't really get to see much of this via the bundesliga um so you know we we are going to just try and go about things from what you can take off online and, and and from bits of reading and research that i've done today um but someone who once again interested to look into Interestingly enough, another point of interest here, this was reported by the Daily Record this morning in their article about Okanuki. They said that during the summer, it was reported that Hearts were actually pursuing the player um, for a deal that was reportedly worth £400,000. But obviously things have changed now. I think his developments went on a little bit further. Celtic have watched him. I think Nuremberg would want a little bit more money than that too. So he's not a, a stranger to the Scottish sides apparently. Celtic aren't the first club to look at him. But I can already tell that that's going to bring up a bit of an issue with some people. Um, I think straight away people will get the the sort of idea that he's not Celtic quality. That the fact that Hearts were looking at him and trying to pursue a deal would maybe suggest he's Hearts quality. And of course the Japanese signings have been a bit of a mixed bag for us so far. We've signed a good few players who have turned out to be Ryo Hitati, Dyson Maidan, Kyogo level. But then for that you've got your Idaguchis and your uh, Kobayashis as well. It's been a bit hit or miss. Um, so some people do have their reservations and people will have their reservations looking at that about Hearts but listen this is a guy who could have went to Hearts and maybe lit the league apart and been on the, the radar for Celtic a year or so um, down the line anyway so there's no point in using that quite heavily let's just have a look at the player himself first should we so then let's talk a little bit more about the man himself Okanuki who only did join Nuremberg in the summer. He moved to the Zweide Bundesliga in the summer transfer window when Hearts were interested, when Hearts were looking for a move. He picked his place, he went to Germany like a few of the Japanese players do. It seems to be quite a popular destination for them. Um, so he's been playing there for the summer where the season's been kind of going okay, but he moved there from 
And this is why I need to keep looking at the screen because the pronunciations for these are nuts. He moved there from the J2 league, uh, coming from Omiya Ardesia, uh, having having previously been out on loan in Poland where he was playing for Goring Zabrese, uh, or Zabrez pronunciations. They're difficult, by the way. If it's not German, I don't know. <laughs> so he's been in Europe for a little while. He was at Poland on, in Poland on loan. He's now playing for Nuremberg, of course, um, where he scored four goals in 15 appearances. Uh, in the Zweide Bundesliga, which isn't a bad return. Trust me, I've been to a couple of Zweide Bundesliga games now in the second division of Germany, and it's it's not the nicest football <laughs> if it's going off the games I've managed to catch. Sometimes it can be tough to watch. Sometimes it can be very defensive as well. It can be a bit nasty. It's a bit... Uh, quality's not quite Bundesliga level. Uh, and it can be a tough league to watch at times. So, you know, four goals in 15 games for his first season there with Nuremberg isn't a bad return. Celtic have been following that, watching with interest. But, of course, only joining in the summer means that he's got a bit on his contract there. will probably make it harder for Celtic to pick him up. But he's off to a good start. Got to talk about the position. I've not even brought that up yet. People are like, okay, he scored four goals, but where from? Well, he's somebody who can play in a number of different positions across that front line, but mostly deployed as a left winger or as a kind of second striker. That seems to be his forte. Um, and do you know what? We do need to bring in another striking option, and I think there is a number of names that Celtic have looked at over the, the past couple of windows, names that we've been linked with, who could probably be of more interest to us as fans with better statistics to read into or a bit of degree in general but he's done okay from playing in those kind of areas as a second striker um come to transfer mark he's scored 11 times from 38 games from the left wing wing six times from 32 games he's got 22 goals in his professional career and 139 appearances which for somebody who floats between two positions seems to be okay he seemed to have the best of his time in the j2 league the question is, will he be ready to take that jump to playing for a club like Celtic? And I think that's where people's problems will come in because they probably want someone who has a little bit more recognised ability and, and kind of you know what you're getting rather than another gamble, another kind of cheaper signing um, and, and hoping for the best. He's somebody whose stats don't jump off the page at me. I think there's been a couple of other strikers, for example, who I've looked at and I went, yeah, okay, that looks decent. Um, Sidney Van Hooydonk was one of them. Kavis Garden was one of them as well towards the end of the summer transfer window. I think there are players who, for me, would probably be ahead of Okanaki, uh, or Okanuki, sorry, in January for me. But valued currently £800,000 if it's somebody the club feel like they can pick up cheap. We know the route the club usually like to go down. The opinion that, that I've gathered from Nuremberg fans uh, on social media in response to all of these posts and articles is that they're a fan of him um, and they would want to see good money for him should he leave Nuremberg anytime soon. Um, I mean, that's one of the things I spoke about very quickly. I kind of brushed over it. He only joined in July. Um, so this is something that I think the club will be trying to milk. I don't think they would want 800000 I think they'd probably want upwards of a million one and a half million pounds is that going to be worth Celtic going for is the Nuremberg fans opinions enough I've never watched them play so you're basically going with gut feeling and, and your own research and deciding if you think this is the guy for us if you're wanting to look at it positively, which I always try and do with every player Celtic are linked with, whether they be a Japanese second division player or an English Premier League player, um, if you want to look at it positively, then there is some, some really good reading into the guy because his development seems to be coming on pretty well. He's someone who, now 24 years of age, is getting into those years now where he'll probably want to establish himself somewhere, whether it be Celtic, whether it be Nuremberg, whether it be in another top division. Uh, he's coming along quite well because he's been doing well at Nuremberg and he's also got himself into the Japanese national team. He's not made an appearance yet. He's not been capped yet for the national team. However, he was called in to the squad for the last set of international fixtures. He was an unused substitute, but that to me speaks volumes about the quality of player you're getting there and the development of player you're getting there because look at the Japanese national team set up. Look at the manager and look at his selections. This was a manager who went to the World Cup and decided he didn't want Ryo Hitati, he didn't want Kyogo Furuhashi, who were two players we were blown away by and thought surefire picks for the 2022 World Cup. Speaks a lot of the quality in that Japanese national team that he didn't take those two. He took Dyson Maeda and that was it. So if this guy is getting into the team and the manager sees something in him, his development at Nuremberg must be impressive enough to warrant 
this attention by Celtic, the scouting from Celtic, um, and maybe it's something that the club will look further into and, and notice how rapid this development is going for him. The only thing to flip that is he was involved in the last set of uh, international games, however he won't be involved in this upcoming set. He hasn't been selected in the squad for qualifiers um, against Myanmar and Syria, so who knows, up and down, you can only go with what you're given here. So, you know, Celtic clearly, whether or not, I, look, listen, I'm going to, what I will say is this, if you're looking for my opinion in which these videos mostly you come here for, my opinion is I, I don't think there's much to this. Celtic are obviously going to scout players and we've obviously got a, a well-established network now in looking at Japanese players. That's no lie. Uh, that's no mystery. It's it's as plain as the nose in your face. We are very interested in the Japanese market at this moment in time. I think that it's just typical um, business by Celtic to go and scout these players and see what's happening. I really don't think that there's going to be much more to it. I think the end of the report puts it well in saying there's no concrete offer. I don't even think there'll ever be a concrete offer. It's just somebody we're looking at. I think the main bigger picture that you've got to take from this is that we do need another striker and Celtic are looking in that area. This is somebody who can play left wing and striker. Um, and I think that maybe speak volumes as to what Brendan Rodgers is looking for going into this January window because we do need to upgrade in those areas. We've not got great depth up front. We've only got Owen Kyogo and one of them goes out and you're just left with one sole striker. You need another one. And on the left wing, we've got Luis Palma. Um, we've got Dyson Maida as well, of course, is naturally on the left. But you look at the shortage right now we have of wingers. We're, we're left with Mikey Johnson, James Forrest, guys that shouldn't be options at this moment in time for Celtic so we are looking at areas that's the good thing I don't really I don't necessarily care too much at the moment about Okanuki in in general what I care about is the fact that we are looking at this area we're obviously scouting in the right um, places just now to try and strengthen um, the positions in the park that need strengthened the most and that for me is the biggest takeaway from anything in this story so it's early days, it's still a month and a half until January and we will watch each story including this one as they develop, however it is the first player to be linked with the club ahead of the January transfer window and that is enough for me to have a bit of a discussion and conversation throughout this very boring international break. Um, let me know your thoughts on Kanji Okanuki in the comments below, as I said take everything with a pinch of salt and I'd be kind of surprised myself if this develops much further anytime soon. But we will follow it as it does. So, uh, yeah, like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll see you all next time.